At Oxford College of Business, we offer world-class business qualifications awarded by some of the best universities in the world. That's because all we do, all we are, is business education. For over 100 years, Ceylon tea contributed significantly to sustain and strengthen the Sri Lankan economy. Scottish national James Taylor holds the reputation for developing tea as the first commercial plantation in Ceylon and commenced and manufactured of tea at Lulacondera Estate in Hevahata. Lulacondera Estate is known to be the first patch of tea planted after the failure of coffee plantation in Ceylon. With the success of the Lula Condra plantation, James Taylor, who was in charge of the plantation at that time, remains forever remembered in the century-old history of Ceylon tea. Other Verena spoke to one among the pioneers who had contributed to tea plantation in Sri Lanka. Considered the last English tea planter in then Ceylon, Peter Hooper has made a significant contribution to Sri Lanka's largest foreign exchange earning industry. Well, um, at, at when I started, uh, Sri Lanka was the leading tea producing country in the world. But due to a whole lot of reasons, other countries have exceeded our yields and uh, our markets. So I would say these are the biggest changes. And the other thing I see, labor were very, the workers were very keen to work on estates 60 years ago. Now they're not a key, at all keen working on estates. They want jobs outside the estate. Celebrating 150th year of Ceylon tea, the first ever monument that the state has built in recognition of the first tea planter James Taylor was unveiled by Minister of Plantation Industries Naveen Disanayake. As you know, we have endured a lot. We have gone through tough times and we are still going through a tough time. Uh, the industry knows about uh, rough patches. Uh, the, it was early the prices that were severely depressed, but now the production is also affected because of the drought and other various issues. So I hope that in the future to come that we can address all these issues that are there. The issue of glyphosate was highly unnecessary. I felt that uh, that was a policy that we should not have taken, especially for the tea industry. I understand the concerns of environmentalists and other uh, groups uh, for the ban. I really do. I understand that. But I don't think that you cannot have commercial agriculture with, uh, without any weedicide. We will be also undertaking the 150-year uh, marketing campaign, global marketing campaign, which we have funds for. And I want to see that the funds are properly utilized in this marketing campaign. Chairman of the Sri Lanka Tea Board, Rohan Pethiagoda, also speaking to other Dharana, expressed future expectations of Sri Lankan tea industry. I think the tea industry is doing very well this year with the, with the prices. We have, have really good prices this year. But the problem we're having is that because of the drought and the lack of weedicides and some problems earlier with fertilizer, the tea crop has fallen very significantly by almost 15% over the last year. At a separate celebration in lieu of 150 years of Ceylon tea, chairman of the Colombo Tea Traders Association, Anselm Pereira, spoke about the industry's journey thus far. When we started tea here, we supplied tea as a commodity. We didn't supply tea as a finished product. Today, about 40% of our product goes as a finished product, ready to drink on the rack. But if you look at bulk part of the trade, we still need the bulk because we cannot pack all 350 or 300 million kilos of our tea and export it in finished product because around the world, there are many places, many countries that have facilities to pack tea. 